Let's solve an interesting problem from the USSR Math Olympiad book. Which integers have the property that if the final digit is deleted, the integer is divisible by that new number? An example is helpful here, 110, for example, if we delete its last digit of 0, becomes 11. And clearly, 110 is divisible by 11. In this case, eliminating the final digit reduced the number by a factor of 10. Another simple example is 80. If we eliminate the last digit of 0, it becomes 8, and clearly 80 is divisible by this new number. So these are the sorts of numbers we're looking for, and in fact, this brief discussion gives us a quick, infinite set of solutions. It should be pretty easy to see that any positive integer 10k satisfies the given condition. If we have a positive integer in the form of 10k, then we could write it like this. All of its digits, dn, dn minus 1, up through d1, with the final digit being forced as 0, because it's a multiple of 10. Then, if we delete that last digit, this is the number, d1 all the way up through dn, and clearly, if we multiply this by 10, we'll get the original number back. So, any positive integer that's a multiple of 10 satisfies the condition. Deleting its final digit will reduce it by a factor of 10, and thus it will be divisible by the new number. Now, let's investigate the possible solutions that are not multiples of 10. Clearly, for an integer to have the property we seek, deleting its last digit has to reduce it by an integral factor. In the case of multiples of 10, any time we delete the last digit, we reduce it by a factor of 10. And so, if you take the new number and multiply it by 10, you get back the original number. Clearly, the original number is divisible by the new number. But it doesn't have to be the case that deleting the last digit reduces the number by a factor of 10. It could be reduced by any integral factor, and we would still have a solution to our problem. 34, for example, does not work because deleting its last digit produces 3. That is not reducing 34 by an integral factor. In this case, we've reduced 34 by a factor of 34 over 3. Clearly, 34 is not divisible by the new number. But in order for an integer to be a solution to the problem that we're looking at, it's going to have to have this property. The deleting the last digit does reduce it by some integral factor. And now we're thinking about reductions by integral factors other than 10. We've already talked about reducing an integer by a factor of 10 when you delete its last digit, which happens for all multiples of 10. So then, what are the other possibilities? Well, let's suppose we have a number n, so that if the last digit of n is deleted, then n is reduced by some factor that's greater than 10. Let's say 10 plus a, where a has to be at least 1 and less than or equal to 9. A has to be at least 1 because we're talking about factors that are greater than 10, and A has to be less than or equal to 9 because it's not possible to reduce a number by a factor greater than 19 by simply eliminating the last digit. In the case of 20, for example, here's a number written as a sequence of digits where the digit in the ones place is D0. If we eliminate that last digit, D0, we get this number, again written as a sequence of digits. Clearly, if we multiply this by 20, we get something bigger than the original number, because multiplying it by 10 would just give us the original number only with a 0 in the place of D0. And then doubling that obviously is going to produce a bigger number. Point being, if you delete the last digit of a number, it's not possible to reduce it by a factor of 20. It just doesn't work that way. And so certainly it's not possible to reduce it by any greater factor either. Okay, so we have our number n that we're supposing if its last digit is deleted, then it's reduced by some factor that's greater than 10 and necessarily no greater than 19. Now let's capture the last digit of this number n. We can do that using the division algorithm with n and 10.
by the division algorithm, n is equal to 10q plus r. If we divide n by 10, we get some quotient q, how many times 10 goes into n, and we get some remainder r, where it must be that r, the remainder, is greater than 0 and less than 10. It must be less than 10 just by the division algorithm, because if r were greater than 10, then in fact we could increase the quotient. That's not how the division algorithm works. The remainder has to be less than 10. On the other hand, r has to be greater than 0, because we're not talking about multiples of 10 anymore. We're done with that discussion. We're talking about numbers that are not divisible by 10. So it does have to have some non-zero remainder when divided by 10. Now, r and q are pretty important characters here, because if the last digit of n is deleted, the new number is going to be q, and the last digit is that remainder r. For example, in the number 123, if we divide this number by 10, we're going to get 12 with a remainder of 3. Clearly, 12 is what results when we delete the last digit, and the last digit is that remainder of 3. Now that we've put names to all this stuff, we can start to write some equations which will get us towards the solution. Remember that n needs to be a number such that when its last digit is deleted, it is reduced by some factor which we're saying is 10 plus a, some factor greater than 10, because we already talked about the times when it's reduced by a factor of 10. So that's going to give us this equation. We need this to be true, that our number n is equal to 10 plus a times q, because we delete the last digit, that produces the number q, like we talked about, and it must be the case that deleting that last digit reduces n by a factor of 10 plus a. Thus, n must equal 10 plus a times q. But then n equals 10q plus r, so 10q plus r equals 10q plus aq, just distributing over here on the right. Subtracting 10q from both sides produces r equals aq, where it must be the case that both a and q are at least 1 and no greater than 9. a is at least 1 and no greater than 9 because, well, we already talked about that. a has to be between 1 and 9. As far as q, let's think about the remainder r. We already said r has to be greater than 0 and less than 10, but we just as well could have said r has to be greater than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to 9. Now, aq equals the remainder. So if the remainder is at least 1 and no more than 9, naturally that places a restriction on q as well. The smallest that a can be, like we said, is 1, which means the biggest q can be is 9, because r, the remainder, cannot exceed 9. Similarly, the biggest that a can be is 9, and so the smallest that q can be is 1. So r equals aq, where both a and q are between 1 and 9. Thus, we're able to restrict the solutions we're looking for, because n is equal to 10q plus r, as we already talked about, which is now, we know, less than or equal to, plugging in the upper bounds, less than or equal to, 90 plus 9, which is less than 100. So the only solutions left for us to investigate that are possible are two-digit solutions. Now recall, we want n to be reduced by an integral factor when we delete its last digit. And since we're calling that factor of reduction 10 plus a, where a is between 1 and 9, we have to investigate these nine possibilities for a. a could be 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 9. So to make sure we thoroughly investigate all possible solutions with two digits, we'll have to let a range from 1 to 9 and see what we find. In the case that a equals 1, this means deleting the last digit of n reduces it by a factor of 10 plus 1, or 11. That means that n, which we could write as d1, d0, it's just some two-digit number, must also equal 11 times the number remaining when we delete the last digit. The last digit is d0, so that means n must equal 11 d1. But remember, we actually already have a name for d1 in this case, because when we were talking about the division algorithm, we saw that the last digit being deleted produces the quotient q. 
So in the case of a two-digit number, deleting the last digit just leaves the first digit. So D1 is actually Q, that number that remains after deleting the last digit. So we can replace this D1 here with Q. Q is the number that remains after deleting the last digit. So N must equal 11 times Q. Q can't just be anything though, because remember, AQ equals the remainder. In this case, we're setting a equal to 1, and we also know that the remainder can't exceed 9. So if a is equal to 1, then q has to be less than or equal to 9, which means that n could be 11, 22, 33, or any multiple of 11 up through 99, where q takes on its maximum value. Now, in the case that a equals 2, Again, remember the remainder is aq, and the remainder cannot exceed 9. So if a is 2, then q cannot exceed 4, because if it did, the remainder would be too big. Now, a being equal to 2 means that when the last digit of n is deleted, the number is reduced by a factor of 10 plus 2, or a factor of 12, and it must be divisible by 12. So it must be the case that n equals 12 times that remaining number, which is just the first digit, which is q. And since q is less than or equal to 4, that produces 4 more solutions, n could be 12, 24, 36, or 48. We complete a similar analysis for a equal to 3, deleting the last digit reduces n by a factor of 13, and get 3 more solutions, and same with a equals 4, we get 2 more solutions. Remember, in each case, a restriction is implicitly placed on q, because aq cannot exceed 9. After a equals 4, each subsequent possibility, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, each produce one solution alone. 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. Delete the last digit of any of those guys, you get 1. Obviously, they're all divisible by 1, so all of those are solutions as well. Finally, we have our solution set. All multiples of 10. All the solutions in the a equals 1 case, a equals 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And we also could include all the negatives of these numbers, because negatives don't affect divisibility. So let's just write that as well. And the negatives. If we're counting just the positives and considering the multiples of 10 as kind of trivial solutions, we might say there are 23 non-trivial solutions in this case, or 46 if we count the negatives. So there it is, a detailed solution to a pretty interesting digit alteration problem from the USSR Math Olympiad problem book. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and if you want to check out some more interesting math problems, check out my playlist in the description. For even more math problems and other exclusive of content, please consider joining Wrath of Math as a channel member to help support what I do. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, uh, I'm the mathematical menace, the machinations of mankind, two calculators at the same time, hand signs and abacus, finger count and calculus, I'm the V to the T, my parameter, the rapidest, happens like this, my lectures, the most prominent, dominant, call me the Morgan, I get the compliments, the union in together like any time that we intersect.